One of our listeners, Betsy, sent us an email requiring two segments to answer. The first up is about an old garden she wants to renovate. Here is part of her email. When I bought my home 30 years ago, there was a large parking lot in the backyard. I had black, it was blacktop. Approximately 35 feet by 15 feet. Removed and started planting perennials in the space. Some plants came from the big box stores and, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, and many from neighbors and friends. I also planted a few daffodil bulbs, bulbs. 30 years later, I have more of a mess than a garden. There are tall plants hiding smaller plants. A few species are quite invasive and would like to take over, and there are literally hundreds of daffodil buds competing for space. Therefore, I would like to redo the garden. The question is how and when. About five of the plants are large and thriving, so I would like to keep them. A few others need to be moved. Getting out the roots of the invasive plants will be difficult. Should I dig out the good plants, put them in pots for a month, and spray the others with an insecticide or herbicide? Should I wait until everything dies back in the fall and try to dig out the invasive roots? Other ideas? <laughs> well, well. All right. We will bypass the came from big box stores. No wonder why it's a mess. Yeah. <laughs> Get it all in. It's a mess. All right. Decide what you want to keep. Mm-hmm. And then put them in, like, basic nursery containers. Go to your local garden center and ask. Um, honestly, sometimes those containers are quite expensive, and they may say no. So don't be disappointed. Uh, if you have some pots, that would be great. Um Get the biggest plants first and and dig those out. We are approaching the time uh, that they should be okay to to transplant. Depends on what the the varieties are. But if you get a big enough root ball, you should be absolutely fine. Um, Again, no matter if you spray or not, it doesn't really matter. Because you still have to pull everything out. The only good thing about spraying first is that you're killing it and the likelihood of them just re re sprouting from say roots that you left in the ground that they'll actually die and so the root would be dead it would be dead all the way through to the root you want to use high yield kills all which is a glyphosate product and you can plant a week later so again, that's that's high yield, kills all, and you can plant a week later. Uh, it's a great product. Uh, it's uh, an active ingredient has been used for years, uh, and that uh, again, I, I that's what I use at my house. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yes, um, once you're done and you get everything pulled out and cleaned up, and you have your plants saved that you want to do, you want to till the entire garden. Rent a rototiller. And you want to add this. It gives you an opportunity to add um, soil amendments that you weren't able to before. And tilling it and getting that that air in the soil and you get it loosened. And then again, we want you to add bumper crop into that soil because that will make that soil more alive. Uh, I can only imagine after the blacktop was removed. I know that was a lot of years ago. But it was all compacted soil, probably subsoil, and it probably wasn't very good. But now you have a chance to have a blank canvas. And again, you can do so much. And it's a big area. It's 15 by, what was it, Holyoke? 15 by 30? 35 by 15. Yeah, and that where you can create elevations by creating berms, say, in the back of it. How is it viewed? That's a big question. How is it viewed? Is it viewed from... Just one side so that you could have a a berm in the back? Or is it viewed from four sides or even two sides to where you can keep an elevation uh, in the middle and it actually work that way? Plants are easy. Plants are easy. You know, the tallest things in the center, shortest things towards the front. But you don't want to restrict this thought to just plants. Think about... You know, pathways, 
like having like a stone pathway through it so that you actually can walk through the middle of it. You know, you don't need a wide pathway. It could it could be two foot is wide enough, and it just creates a visual break in the garden. Designing a good landscape or a garden is all about its color, its texture, and its form. So color of the plants, obviously, pink and blue and white. and But then it's also the textures like that ferns give you, that, it's that, that light, airy texture, or other plants that it gives you more of a bulky feel. That That's the, what, what I mean by texture. And form is like a pyramidal, is it... Is it, you know, a hedge? It's those types of things. And and again, don't restrict yourself to planting one plant, you know. Where I, you know I'm going to put one of these, and I'll get one of these, and I'll put one of these, and I'll put one of these. Instead, you know, think of planting maybe in groups of three, in clusters of three. You can use ground cover, uh, you know, even grasses like liriope in clusters of three and make pockets of plants rather than, trying to do one at a time. I, I always love that you can plant, always plant, like the, like there's always room for more oh, yeah. with perennials that you don't have to have it done. And make sure you're not planting it all at one time. You're going to spend a year planting this. And if you're listening to us, you're going to take a year to plant this garden. Not just do it in one weekend or one you know, two weeks. Yeah. Wait, because the plants that you can get now, like you can get coneflowers now and you can get black-eyed Susans and different types of, of like Montauk daisies are coming but you can't necessarily get the Shasta daisies that bloom in spring or you can't get like um, the ground cover mountain pinks or creeping flocks that is in spring there are things that you can't get like for instance I mean you probably get hollyhocks now but you're not going to be able to get a good selection of a still the even hostas, there's going to be limited selection of hosta that you would be able to see for the spring. So take your time. And then again, don't just use perennials. Use trees. Like you could plant a tree if you're looking at it from four sides. Plant a tree in the center of it or plant, you know, not big trees. I'm not talking about giant oak trees. I'm talking about some medium and even small trees. Japanese maple, blood good Japanese maple, where it gets to be about 15 to 20 feet. Bright, you know, great red color in the leaf. And it just gives you a little different perspective. Also, you know, I was I was looking at one of the plants that we have at Bloomers, and, and it's a, a, it's a um, coral bark maple. And beautiful in the winter as well as growing the rest of the year. Use little boulders and I, like well, i say little it's probably weighs 100 pounds but it's a, a boulder that would be the size of say instead of planting three perennials together it would be a boulder that's that size that gives it a little bit of a different dynamic feel to it and again it's it's all about color texture and form and that includes the any boulders or stone and and that we want you to mulch it and make sure you mulch with a, a good unobtrusive mulch um i know my project that i'm working on right now is is a landscape around my deck i'm going to use um pine straw um pine straw is used down south a lot i like the way it looks i saw it everywhere last week in atlanta oh my goodness everywhere you went to georgia and that's where it's it's used absolutely and it's uh it's not like they're grinding up stumps or pallets or anything like some of the recycled uh mulch is that uh, I, it, that's what I'm going to use, and it's light and fluffy and airy, but uh, it's just a different. It's different for us up here, and if, you know, us Yankees haven't picked it up yet. We got to figure it out. But it, again, it, it's it's important to to know your heights and how high you want things to get. You don't want it to block your house. You want it to accentuate your house, and it's important just to again think bigger than just plants that one plant at a time right. oh that would look nice in my garden right. it would look nice where you know would it look nice like say you put creeping flocks over climbing that boulder that you put in yeah now we're right. talking right. you know would it look like a nice edge to that stone if you wanted to put blue stone block two foot 
by say 18 inch or two by two bluestone uh, like pavers, and I mean real bluestone, not not fake concrete pavers, that as a walkway in that stone bed, go ahead and put like say um, woolly time in between the blocks so that it actually is looks it looks like it's supposed to be there, and it's uh, it gives you some. Um, I mean, it actually it's soft on your feet and you can walk on it without killing it. There's a whole line of plants that are uh, one from center to nursery is uh, Blue Blanket. I think that's what they call theirs. Is that right, Julio? That that's right? correct. Yeah, Blue that Blanket, is, is right? Correct. And then there's uh, Steppables and and that there's all type of, they, they basically call them treading plants where you can, can walk on them. Uh, everything from yarrow to you name it. And that you can put them between your your walkway stones. Aaron, to your like point, you yeah. To your point earlier, um, a garden is just not about the plants, right? Right. And so we did a segment last week called Garden Art. I, uh, Betsy mm-hmm. I, and all of our listeners, I implore you to go ahead and check that segment out. It's on our YouTube page. Uh, you can follow us at Bloomers Home Garden. Um, also, um, just to get some more inf- in, you know, inspiration about. You know, what could go in your garden to accent everything that you already have and that you want to bring in later on. So right. Make it personal. To... Absolutely. Make that Make garden personal. And, and that, you know, stand by what you pick. If you decided right. to, you know, get the boy peeing, <laughs> the little statue, <laughs> hey, own it. Or the bird on the, on yeah, the back I, of the, yeah, the gnome. The no, not, man, I don't no. think that is a good taste <laughs> anywhere. But, <laughs> but still, it, it you know, bird feeders... You know, put yeah. put in a bird feeder, or even it's a great place for a platform feeder, um, where it attracts all different types of birds. It it's important to to make it more dynamic. And and you said that that it had gotten out of hand. It's going to need maintenance. It's going to need maintenance. And the same product that kills all that you can spray as long as you do it safely when it's not windy. And if you need to, we, you could use that. It's like a, a liquid hoe. So you'd go in through, you'd, you'd just spray the weeds that come up um, and just make sure you know that it's a weed and not a plant. Although description of a weed is a plant, any plant that's in the wrong spot. And where that will, you know, help you to, to, to do, to clean up. Otherwise, hey, it's weed aerobics. Get out there. Yeah. Bend down. Yeah. Pick a weed. Stand up. Stretch, you know. <laughs> Turn to the right. You know, back down. Give Cha-cha me 20. now, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I... <laughs> anyway, where, you know, it's a great exercise weeding. Right, Hula? You always say that. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm more of a kills all kills kind of all guy. guy. Yeah. 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 Quick and I want it dead yeah all the way down <laughs> to the roots i have to do this entire bit yeah, <laughs> but it, it also it it is like aaron and i we were talking where it's a little bit of a, a meditating moment where you yeah. spend time out in nature which we don't get yeah. the cell phone and everything else it just overwhelms us mm-hmm. overwhelms us that's right so make it yours consider like things like you don't even think about it. what about a section of of Plants that have a fragrance. And I don't mean just roses. People think, oh, roses. No, no. Like, like here is a shrub where a dwarf lilac, a dwarf Korean lilac, put that in. Great, great fragrance. Oriental lilies. I mean, stargazer lilies, there's nothing that has more fragrance. And there's a variety called Casablanca, which is a white lily, very tall. But man, you can smell it a mile away. So just think about putting in a fragrance garden or even a moonlight garden, like where there's a section of it where you can see it from your house, where the, like for instance, some the, some of the plants where they're open at night and then, hey, you can even put our glowing petunias in if you want to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> see them glow at night. Um, there's so much to do. You have a blank canvas. And that I would, you know, if you're going to do something like that, divide it up in quarters. You know, you do, you know, it's 15 feet wide by 35. It's not like you're going to be able to do everything, but at least a couple of plants here and there and a blend of everything from, you know, small trees, a couple of shrubs and dwarf conifers. Like there's a lot you can do. 
but don't like just get hung up on all perennials. It can be certainly, but not if if you put in other plants, it makes the perennials look better. So if you if you take, you know, a dwarf hinoki cypress that is dark green, grows real slow, has great foliage and texture in front and behind a flowering plant, you know, that has the flower and is gaudy and, and brilliant flowers. It's going to make those flowers look that much better. Color, texture, form. Color, texture, form. In her email, Betsy's renovation included getting rid of Pachysandra. Here's what her email said. The second nightmare is in the front. Betsy has a husky voice, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. <laughs> the second nightmare is in the front of the house where I planted a very large bed with Pachysandra some 20 years ago. It's now knee-high in Pachysandra, vinca vines, and weeds. It has to go. Do you think that mowing it down would be sufficient? Spray an herbicide before or after mowing it? Well, my stepson, Brett, ripped out the entire backyard of Danielle's house that was all English ivy by hand. Ooh, by hand. Strong fella. No sprays, no things. Know. Like, he, wow. he just did it. And, and you know, Brett, if you're listening, he doesn't really know what he's doing. But he <laughs> just ha- wanted it gone, and he did it by hand. And, and it's staying pretty clean. But regardless if you spray it or you go and you pull it out by hand... Uh, you're still going to have to get rid of it because you have to pull it out. If you ride over with a lawnmower, it's going to wrap around the blade and it's going to choke out the lawnmower. It, you're not going to have good success. Even like there are some weed eaters or um, trimmers that have a metal blade on the bottom. You could maybe use that, but it's still, it, it it's, I don't know, you're going to have to spray it at some point because like the other garden bed you want to kill everything down to the root but you're still going to have to pull it out by hand now if you use again the the high yield kills all that will kill it okay you may have to do a couple of sprays uh sprays now pachysandra is like a favorite ground cover because it is so does so well and it It respects its borders. It doesn't climb up trees and it doesn't usually jump sidewalks on or walkways and get into uh, the driveway or anything like that. So remember what you're doing. What are you going to replace it with? So get that set first before you start killing everything because all this requires work. You did it 20 years ago, Betsy. I mean, there's a reason. reason I know know 20 years ago, I was a little more ambitious. Um, But again... You need to to kill it, get rid of it, and then also you need to, it gives you a chance to improve the soil. You're going to turn over that bed, and you're going to rake out any of those roots that you can get out, and then make sure that you're back to bare soil. So you've got, again, a blank canvas to work on. Um, It's all going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a lot of work, but it, it also can get done. Again, riding over with your lawnmower sounds great, but the reality is, is that it's not made for that and that you probably are going to choke out your lawnmower um, than if you did it another way. You know, have any, any, any other suggestions, Julio? No, I think, you know, like, uh, Brett, I think she ought to take Brett's uh, <laughs> yeah. the young guy. Sorry, Brett won't be, won't be Brett's available. Brett's not for sale. Uh, <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, I was going to say, take Brett over there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, we would do good. Yeah, but again, it, you need to get it out, and it needs to be sprayed first, kill it down to oh, the root, wow. let it turn brown, then start pulling it out. Um, with kills all, you can you can go and replant. Like say you're spray, you wanted to kill a section of grass because it was all weeds, and you wanted to reseed it. You all you have to do is wait a week. It's not one of those. Uh, it doesn't necessarily poison it, uh, poison the, the soil like some weed controls do. This one, it uh, basically is uh, from the plant's leaves through the root, and then uh, then it's done. It has a. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't stay around very long. So spray it with high yield kills all, and then wait, let it die down. Let it get, you want it to die first, and then you pull it out. And again, you're going to put a rototiller over it. 
You're going to rake out any of the root system that's left, okay? And then you're going to add soil amendments, improve that soil, because this is the one chance you get to do it. And then you have your blank canvas, and you can decide what you're going to do. All right. Betsy, good luck. Remember, send us pictures. We want to we see.